Anyways, here we go. So, right, my name is Miss Gale. I'm an art teacher and also an artist. I teach art um, for middle school kids in Sterling Heights. So, but I have done elementary and I have done high school and college and just all over the place. And I love chalk pastels. So I think that everybody has a little bit of experience of working with chalk pastels, but I'm gonna go over some basics with you, kind of get you set up at first. So I hope for this class, you're sitting at a table because a lot of times maybe you're sitting back in a chair or even on a bed or something, but you really need a table and a chair for this kind of drawing project. So make sure you have that. And Joanna, do you have a question? Um, when you said um, that you like doing art, um, you're an artist. Um, mm -hmm. I really love doing art lately. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Great. Well, I think you're in the right place. And I think you've got um, a really fun medium to work with. And that medium is chalk pastels. These are very soft and very um, colorful, but it can get messy really fast. So as you're sitting at that table and chair, um, you have to look around and realize that this dusty chalk could get everywhere. So if you remember from in art class, you probably worked with these before, or maybe even you did try working with them before this class. Um, they get really dusty really fast and your hands get messy and it's really important to keep at least one or two tissues just for your hands to keep clean. So then you also need to keep your table clean because as we work, we'll have to like, um, shake off our paper a little bit and all a lot of dust falls off <clears throat> but we don't want to do it on the tabletop and we don't want to do it on the floor so if you could get two other tissues that would be great so a total of at least four tissues or paper towels and go ahead and take 60 seconds to run and get four tissues or four paper towels right now run run quick we only have like an hour, right? So we could do this. Get your paper towels or your tissues. Keep yourselves nice and clean. Yeah, perfect. Gino's gone getting it. Evan's got his paper. Maddie's good to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Joanna's ready. And I'm, oh, I just saw some more people. Yep, all right. Advika has her paper towels and, or tissues, and paper, right? And your chalk pastels, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jocelyn's all set. Look at you. I have a question. Hi. I have a question. Okay. Are these the chalk pastels? Yes, they are. Mm-hmm. And, and go do we um, need a single sheet of paper or like a paper that's in a book? Uh, so I think you have a book that's mixed media and that's a good one to use. So what, do you have like a sketch yeah. book or? This one. Yeah, 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 that's the one. Mm -hmm. So you could take one out of there. So that's part of my setup talk right now, perfect. Okay. After your paper towels, yeah, after your paper towels, take your paper out of your book so that the whole book does not get messy. You could put that book like further away and then you take this out. We'll work with one piece of paper at a time. Like maybe we'll get through two pictures today, maybe one. Gino has his hand raised. Hi, Gino. Um, I wanted to know, or what, when you said paper, are we using the mixed media? Yep, exactly. Okay. My paper that I have is a little smaller and my chalk pastels might look a little different from yours. It might be a different set, but it's all the same. <laughs> <coughs> Generally speaking, it's all the same stuff. Good paper and good pastels to use. Wait, wait. Advika has a question. Hi. I don't know what mix. So can I use this paper? Yep, that will work, perfect. <laughs> But take it right out of the book, Advika. Take it out of the book because this is so messy. You don't want to get every page dirty while you work on your one picture today. Yep. Take it right out. Mm. 
Julia is ready. Maddie is ready, looking good. Yeah, and it does take a while. This is an important part of being an artist is getting yourself set up so that you don't totally ruin your entire house and get your um, mom and dad or your family, or in my case, your husband mad at you for making a giant mess. Because chalk pastels, they get a little messy. Um, I will say too, they wash off of everything. It's just dust. But people see the color and they freak out. <laughs> but it's just dust and dust was washes off. Chalk pastels are made up of pigment and a binder that holds it together. And sometimes there is a little bit of plaster in chalk pastels. And so the pigment comes from, um, just to give you a quick overview of the material that we're working with. <laughs> so we've got all of these colors of the chalk pastels and all of the colors from come from different resources. Yeah, beautiful. And it looks so similar to mine. Excellent. Looks like the same number, maybe even the same set. Does your package? Um, I don't think, does it look like this? Is it reeds? Um, no, it's ripped. Oh, okay. So the color themselves could come from something organic and um, like from nature, like minerals and plants and even bugs and flowers. And that's how we get all the different colors, or they might be synthetic. And if you look at the prices of these in stores, it might cost $5 or it might cost $50. So the $5 ones are more synthetic and they're still really pretty and bright. And you guys have a great quality for students, uh, quality stuff. And I have a great quality right in that same price range. But if you, when, when you become professional and famous artists, you might choose the $50 set that is actually made from like flowers and um, yellow ochre mined from the earth. So um, all of those color ingredients are called pigments. And then you mix it all together with like a binder. And that would be something to hold it together. And then um, it's laid out into these um, long straight um, cubes and then chopped up and put in boxes. And that's how you have it. So the um, so you're basically working with like dust that's being held together. So it's kind of an interesting to know and to realize. I think everybody's back and we are ready to go. I'm going to share my screen and take you to my downloads and we'll take a look at our goals for today. So I thought um, because the colors are so rich and beautiful, let's make some sunsets. And we could put something in the sunset, like a silhouette in the sunset afterwards. Let me take you to that share screen where am i going to share my screen with whiteboard iphone ba, 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 ba. Hmm. and then i'll take you to my downloads. Can you guys see this big white screen that says a leader in the 2020? Do you see that now? Okay, I just need to make sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Chicken dog, chicken dog, what am I doing? Downloads. So we're aiming at using, let me get this up bigger. Come on screen, get bigger. We're aiming at doing a beautiful sunset like this with, um, like uh, maybe cool colors down to warm colors. We'll have a sun in the sky. You could do your sunset on the water. I'll do mine on the water and we could look at some other pictures also. And, oh, there, there's my arrow, good. I can't see my arrow. Can I move this box? Oh, there we go. Oh, good. So sunsets on the water. Here's a few photo references. Sometimes the sky is filled with lots of colors and sometimes just a solid color. So we're going to aim at the multicolor sky. We could add some clouds into our sky and we'll have a certain order to it. If we could get your work to look like this, we're pretty good, but I think we could take it further than this. I think we could go further than this and make it more dramatic and uh, a higher impact. I'm thinking a little more along these lines. You could definitely do this. We'll get some drama like this, but this is on the land and you could do yours um, with a horizon line on the land instead of on the water. 
where's my horse friends out there, the Mustangs, there we go with some kind of Mustang ideas. Pretty bench, trees, and water. So you guys get the idea of where we're going. <laughs> <clears throat> Whoops. Oh no, go back, go back, go back. There it is. So this is probably um, what mine will end up looking like. And I'm going to aim at this. We'll start off with a um, solid value um, at the top. We'll kind of do an ombre down to some other colors. We'll have a sun in the center. <clears throat> And then the water with the reflections. And the very last thing we'll do <coughs> is the silhouette with the trees or the hills or the horses or the birds or the eagles or whatever you're going to do there. Okay. And I'm going to go back. I don't know. Did I stop sharing? But yeah. Okay, good. Stop sharing, but here we go. All right, so everybody's got their chalk pastels open now, right? We open those boxes. Yep, you took the plastic off. There might be like a, um, a sheet of like a foam cushion on there. Take that off. <coughs> I'm gonna tilt my camera down from here on and you'll see how I lay this out for myself and the colors that I'm choosing and um, how we're going with this. <coughs> Perfect. I hope this works for you. So I'm going to be drawing this um, so that the paper is long and low, like um, a landscape style instead of portrait style. So your paper can also go the long, low way. And then I'm going to pick out my colors. For my sun colors, I'm going with some warmer yellows. And you might have some different yellows to choose from. We want some pretty impactful colors, strong and exciting colors. So you'll have like a variety of yellows and I'm going to lay them all out for myself um, with the lighter oranges. I'm going to leave this super bright orange right there until the end and I'm pulling out a mid-tone orange and you can set up your palette the same way and <laughs> lay it down next to your tabletop, next to your uh, paper on the table. I'm going to throw a red in here but I'm going to go pretty light on my red. Next, I want to add some violets and purples in the sky. Maybe this light blue. I think this, um, I think one of my indigo blues might be too intense. I'm going to tone it down to this kind of midnight sort of blue. And I think this is looking pretty good. And just by handling these, we get messy, right? So that's why we keep the, um, the uh, paper nearby. I'm going to throw a peachy color in here, too. So I'm going to add it right. I'm going to put it like here, like right in here, maybe a little touch of that mixed in. So if we could set up our working palette, that would be a good start to getting yourself organized. Then once it's all set up, because you took those out, you'll be messy from it. So keep a hand tissue nearby, and this is just for your fingers, because you may need to also have a tissue nearby for when we um, build up chalk on our paper and we have to kind of tap it off and bump that paper. So I'm going to lay this tissue off out um, away from myself so that as I'm drawing on here and it builds up a chalk pile, I could just sort of dump it off onto the tissue like this. So get yourself organized and cleaned up. Eventually we'll work with some black, maybe even some dark green or darker purple. So getting set up is priority one. And I don't see your tabletops in your papers, so I'm just going to guess that you're doing it. If I go too fast, put something in the chat, or if I'm going too slow, say, okay, we got it, move along. Miss Gale, and I'll say, okay, moving along, my friends. Okay, so now I'm gonna um I'm gonna start on the picture itself. 
And in the picture, I need a horizon line. I don't want to put it exactly in the middle. I'm going to drop it down just a little bit lower to make it a little bit more interesting and aesthetically pleasing. So some kids ask, do I need a pencil? If you have the pencil, you could use the pencil at this point and you would draw a horizon line kind of low um, on the paper, not exactly at halfway, but a little bit lower. But for those not using the pencil, I'm gonna start with my yellow and I'm actually gonna use the yellow to make the horizon line lower than halfway and go evenly all the way across. The horizon is where the sky meets the land or where the sky meets the water. And this is my sky. So I'm starting with the yellow and I'm making that horizon line. As I do this, sometimes there's gonna be a little chalk buildup on the, on the picture and on the uh, paper. I'm just leaving all of that right there until the end. After I get my yellow in there, I'm going to establish where the sun goes. So now you decide where you want your sun. It could be like a half of a sun right on the horizon. It could be up in the sky. It could be like right in the middle. It could be over on the side or up in the corner. <laughs> I'm going to do a round sun and maybe put it just off to the left over here. So you decide. I hope everybody chooses something different so we have a big variety when it's finished. So this is my circle for the sun. It might be really hard to see because it's yellow on white paper, right? So we have a sun and the horizon line. Give me a thumbs up if you're at that point. Okay, okay. Sun and horizon line. And if I were to draw it so you could really see it on the paper, don't do this, but I'm just gonna do this so you can see it on the camera. This is what I just drew, horizon line and the sun. So, cause I just did it in yellow and maybe you can't see it, right? So that's what I just drew. <coughs> I'll be going through my colors that I just set up. And I'm going to take the next color in order, which is orange, yellow, orange, red, green, blue, purple, but we don't want any greens in here. So we're going with the orange. So now I'm going to take my orange and I'm going to tilt it. Um, sometimes people, if, you're, if your chalk pastels break, that could be really good. People take these and use them sideways on the paper. But right now, this is going to be too big for what I need. I have two choices. I can lift it up and make some lines on the paper going around the sun. I could also break this and then I'll be able to tilt the whole thing sideways. So now I'm gonna use the shorter one actually. So now I can take this and lay it out sideways and add this to my picture. I don't want it to look like a rainbow where all of these colors radiating out are gonna be like a curve. I wanna break it up like clouds in a sky. And I think everybody's is going to be just a little bit different. Maybe I'll bring a little bit along that horizon line too. I'm not blending yet and I'm just keeping this sitting on the surface for right now. I'm going to switch out to the red and I'll be doing the same thing with my red. So because this red is so wide and it's not broken, I'm actually going to break it. I did it over my little paper towel just in case it made some crumbs and it sure did. I'll put the larger half back in. And let me take some red. We're gonna pull this out also. And I want to keep this kind of like a soft blendy edge going into the orange. And again, I'm not making it perfectly round like a rainbow. I'm going to break it up a little bit, make some natural looking clouds. And clouds are very rarely geometrically perfect, right? There's no half circle cloud. There's no full circle cloud. If I could um, lighten these lines up, on the end for like a little smoky edge. This would be the best option. Now you could really see on the camera 
you can really see the darker red and then how it kind of fades out. I've also got this buildup of the red going here. So now at this point, maybe you have this too. I have these little chalk piles on my paper. I'm gonna lift this up and then tap it onto that um, tissue and just keep that tissue. And we're gonna keep building this up on the tissue until the end and then just throw that tissue away. So I could, I could take the um, piles of dust off of the paper. Let's move on to our next color, which is this kind of violet. Same thing. So I'm gonna break this, maybe not even in half, but a little less than half. I'm gonna go a little more narrow with this purple or violet. Overlap lightly into the red and then push a little darker on your way out. Is that purple? It is, yeah. It's like a violet or a purple. Mm -hmm. And keep this kind of natural cloudy edge going on. I have to be careful because my other hand is dirty and I don't want to mess up my water yet. So maybe I should just wipe my hand off, my left hand, so I could hold my paper and not mess it up. Hold the paper still. Some people like to tape the edges all the way down onto a drawing board and then it just stays on that board. Sometimes I have kids tape it right to a tabletop. But unless you have a table where you could keep that for a long time, it's not a good idea. Like you can't tape it to your, your dining room table and then have dinner, you know? So maybe you have an art studio where you work or your own art space or something, then you could tape it down. If you decide to do that, sometimes you have to de-stick the tape a little bit, like you put it on your pants, you put the tape on your pants and take the, the stickiness off a little bit and then tape your paper down. So I'm just talking while I'm coloring this in and pastel painters, pastel artists are called painters. So I'm not actually coloring, I'm painting. I have a buildup of purple happening. How's your purple going guys? Good, thumbs up. Yeah, yeah. And, and just on its own right now, this is looking pretty exciting, right? Like who doesn't love the color? And this color is so beautiful and so um, saturated and we haven't even blended yet. So my hands are not even that messy from this. It's just picking the, pick the, um, the sticks up and putting them down. I'm going to move into maybe like the super light violet. I don't know if you have a variety of purples. <laughs> if you have something a little darker, that could be fun or switch right to your blues. So I have two colors left on mine, which is like a light blue or a periwinkle and a darker blue. I guess I have this one too. So it depends on your variety and it depends on how much space you have left. So I've got a good, you know, like three or four or five inches of space over here. I could have a little variety of blues and you kind of have to gauge how this will go. You just want to get a little dark and dramatic out on your outside edges for this. So I'm going to break this one, add some of this lighter blue, maybe just like a transition color, right? And again, it's not a perfect half circle. This is not a rainbow. Is that light blue? Yeah, it's kind of like a periwinkle blue, like a light blue, but I just wanted a little touch of that. And now I'm going to hit it with the darker blue. Yeah. Clean my hands off before I hold the paper again. I'm going to fill the rest of this sky in with this. This is my darkest blue. It's not super dark. Maybe this other one's a little darker. Let's see. Oh yeah, there's some drama. That's what I want. And when you keep these pastels laying flat, you get an even coverage. 
and it goes a lot faster than if you're using like the tip of a pastel pencil. Pastels do come in pencil form. They actually have like the wooden, the wooden um, um, surrounding to it, and it's a pastel core. And that's really fun to use. It's mostly for like when you fill your whole picture with the sticks like this, and then you go in with the, the pastel pencil, and you could do like whiskers on a cat, or the, the spines and tines of a cactus, right? So little details, little wispy grass, the very last few things in a picture, those pastel pencils work so nicely for that. I filled this blue in. I'm gonna soften up a couple of places to add some interest with some lighter blue, just to add a little excitement and make it less predictable. I do have a big chalk buildup on my paper, so be sure to tap your paper off on that um, on the tissue to clean this off as you go. I'm tapping it from behind, like with my hand from behind. I'm going to lift this up and do a quick check with everybody. Ah, oh, Maddie, looking good. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Who else? Advika, show me. Lovely. Yes, good, good. Gino's got his. Ooh, big sun for Gino. Awesome. Good, good, good. Awesome looks good. <laughs> Julia, yeah, wow, you got big paper, Julia. It's gonna take you a while, but if you could fill the rest of that sky up with the blue, you could even do it all the way out to the edge and add a little bit, bit of black on the edge. That would be so dramatic. Yeah, that would be, that would be like night is falling. Nice stuff going on there. Let me check my other friends. Caden, looking nice. Your sun is up higher. You've got a little variety. Caden, did you fill in the bottom also? You got a little ahead of me. Yeah. All right. And and that looks really yep. good. Yep. That looks good. I didn't do the bottom part yet. And um, we'll see how this goes. So hold on. You added a little man on an island. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. Don't go to black yet. Don't add the black. Jocelyn looks really nice. Great big sun in there. Oh, this is good. You guys better be taking pictures and sending them into uh, Miss Lindsay. We need to get some pictures going on. Taylor and Paige, are you okay? And Evan is holding that picture up upside down, but I see it and it is beautiful. All right, here we go. So we're gonna do this technique. It's called blending. Hi, Joanna, question? Blending, lady? Sorry. Unmergency. Um, I didn't, um, I can, like, um, the connection had kicked me out, so I had to miss some of the part to the sunset. Did you keep your colors in order? Yeah. Hold up your picture again. Let's see. Oh, okay. So we went on from that yellow, orange, and red to the purple, and then all of your blues. Yep, so this is where it gets really messy. If you have long sleeves, pull, pull, pull those sleeves off. Yeah, um, we're doing good. Ah, you're breaking up a little bit. I can't totally hear you. Is that Taylor and Paige talking? Um, we're doing good. <laughs> okay, all right, yeah. Right on. So here we go. So um, when I work with chalk pastel, I like to keep my fingers organized, which sounds ridiculous. But when I work with chalk, I often blend the colors with my fingers. But you can't use um, one finger for yellow and then go and put it in with the red, because then you'll start mixing your colors. <laughs> you'll get orange. And then if you go back to yellow, then it kind of ruins your sun. So it might be like a matter of mixing colors uh, and keeping your fingers organized. I'm going to tilt my camera down and show you what my next step is. 
and I'm keeping all of this, um, all, um, all the um, white part of the paper, all clean and perfect until we start adding the water or the land. So now I'm gonna use one finger for my yellow and I make sure it's nice and clean because it almost looked a little blue. There we are. And I'm gonna kind of buff this into the um, texture of the paper. And some of you have a nice smooth paper and some of you have a toothy paper. Mine's a little bit toothy. And then I'm just gonna keep working my finger outward and outward. And I'm kind of doing these little circles and it's going to soften up all of these colors and still keep it really um, saturated, but soften up the blended edges. Maybe when I get into purple, I'll switch to another finger so I don't totally pull that red into the purple. We're gonna keep it separate. And I'm just going around and around uh, in the same way that I applied it to the paper. So if I made it like an edge with like a dip into the red, then that's how I'm going to blend it. If it looks like there's not enough chalk on there and you get right back down to the paper again, you could always go back and add that color. Like it looks like I could use a little more purple in here to kick up the drama again. I'm gonna add a little bit more in there. Go back to my purple finger and really knock that darker. Oh, that made a big difference. And if I have chalk piles on my paper, now I can blend it in a little bit too. And I'm just sort of rotating around and buffing this in. So the sun and the sky are going to be soft and blendy. And there shouldn't be any white showing up there. I'm gonna switch from my purple finger to a blue finger. And keep blending this all the way out. So these teeny little rotations. so that there's not any white showing in the sky when I'm finished. You're gonna be so proud of this. You're going to wanna to buy a frame for this, I think. Maybe you'll save it for a Father's Day gift. These might be a good one too. At the end of our at the end of our five classes, we're gonna do an exhibit at the gallery, Miss Gale. So oh if they take their pictures, they can bring them down and we can exhibit them all together. Which oh, you guys are so lucky. Wow, what a great thing. That's fantastic. Having a gallery show. Great opportunity for you. Clean up my table a little bit so I don't get the back of my picture messy now. So yeah, if you're thinking that this is one of your better pieces, for sure, buy that frame. And let me lift the camera to see how we're doing. Everybody's working. Nice. I see Maddie's looking good. Evan, great, great, great. And for those of you with that really big paper, if you have a small sun and your colors are radiating out like this, and you have this much paper, you could even add a little black on the outside edges for some super drama. Whoa, Gino took it all the way down. He's got some green on the bottom. And you guys are fast workers. Jocelyn, how's it going? Are we looking on the ground yet? So good. I'm just about to start it, yeah. Ground or grass, I mean ground or water. So it could be a landscape or a seascape. 
Yeah, so good. Whose nickname is awesome? Tell me your name. My name is awesome. Oh, it is awesome. That's great. Uh, this is my picture. Yeah, that black really did it, didn't it? Yeah, as soon as you said add a little black, that just like sparks me. Mm -hmm. It looks a little square right now. If you could bring in those corners, because it looks so square, if you could like... um, Like try and blend it in a little bit yeah, more? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, okay. couldn't, I couldn't get it into words. I could see it in my head. Perfect. All right, let's move on. I'm going to do a water scene. And it, I, I saw some people did like a grass or hill or something. That will work too. And so um, I, I'm going to put my colors back in order over here because I'll be adding the colors of the water back in that same order that I did the sky because everything in the sky is reflected in the water, right? Here it is, here it is, and here it is. I'm going to go with um, maybe a different light blue just to differentiate a little bit. All right, so I've got my yellow. Let me break my yellow down smaller now. I didn't do that before. Again, it's going to be a little tricky to see with the yellow, but once I add the orange and the red next to it, you'll get it. So I've got the yellow tip sideways. Instead of doing like a reflection coming straight down, I'm going to go sideways. Water always has to be um, horizontal. If it's calm, ripples in the water like this. And my marks are going to be kind of small towards the sun. And then when they come out toward me at the bottom of the paper, they're going to get a little, get wider. And then at the very bottom, they'll get smaller again. So it's sort of like if you took that circle and stretched it out, and sliced it at the same time. <laughs> and let me get this off. Let me show you what this looks like. I think when I get the orange on, you'll see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to follow that same sort of jaggedy edge that I did with the yellow. Out and back in again. And then I'm going to do it to this side too. I think I'm like, tipping this up so I'm working with the corner and the long edge at the same time. And if you did grass, you could warm up some of the grass with yellow and make um, some yellow tips of the grass and draw fine lines because that grass does reflect and glisten a little bit in the sunshine. I'm going to keep my little yellow border uh, of the horizon line all the way across. I'm moving on to red. I'm not blending this at all. I'm just keeping it right on that surface right now. I'm still following that same line. I'm going to go a little less on the red. My red amount is less than my purple. So I'm going to make this a little less. You have to kind of like see how much is in your sky and try to imitate that amount in the water, but break it up. I'm on purple. Hoping you guys are keeping up with me. If not going on, doing more. And I'm keeping that horizontal um, line work as I'm doing this. Because if the lines start to tilt upward, it looks like the water is being poured down or it's like somehow lifting up off of the, the lake or the river or the, the sea or whatever this is, the ocean, the Caribbean. It's like I'm taking you on a field trip. We're not working directly from a photo, but 
you could make these pictures directly from your own photos. Looking good, awesome. Um, so when you take vacations or even when you're out this summer and you see an awesome sunset, you've got to start building up your photo collection for reference photos and your chalk pastel pictures will get so much better if you have an exact picture to look at. It just gets so much better. But this one's right from our imagination. That's very cool too. I'm gonna just do a little touch up of blue here and there to break up my um, yellows and oranges to remind people like, hey, this is the water. This is not another sky. A little different blue in the water. And I didn't blend this yet. I haven't done any blending yet. This is a different blending technique down here on the water. I'm done. Whoa, you guys are so fast. I'm going to knock off the dust and show you the blending technique on this one. I'm going to clean my hands up first so I can get them messy again. There's only 16 minutes left in our class. I'm going to show you this technique and then I'll ask to see yours. Wow, so good. Here we go. So you're ready to blend and I'm looking at, I think Tiffany is really super bright and exciting. For the blending technique on the water, it's going to be a little bit different. I'll still use one finger at a time, but I'm going to run that finger from one side of my paper and I'll go all the way across just once. All the way across just once. And then I'll do it again with my next finger. So I don't know if you could see the difference of where it blended in here and now it's like still showing the paper through and I'm pressing pretty hard too. And just once, all the way across. Look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. Now I'm going to use my next finger. Just once, all the way across. Next finger, I'm going to run out of fingers. I can only do this five times. No, I can clean my fingers and start again. I might do that. I'm going to wipe my fingers off. My horizon line's a little messy too. Here's my last run, just once, all the way across. I had one little blob over here. There we are. I'm gonna wipe my fingers off again. My, um, my horizon line has that yellow line. I'm just gonna clean that up a little bit. My blue sky looks too white next to this horizon line. Let me bring my blue sky down a little bit, touch it up a little. Getting that drama all the way down to the horizon. And I'm a little crumb here. Got that crumb out. I'm going to go a little bit faster just to make sure we get all of this in. I'm going to go back to my peachy color. I pulled this peachy color out. Maybe you have that really, really light orange. That's a good one to use too. And pink is really good too. I'm going to add some gentle clouds drifting by in the sky. And that's for sure going to separate the sky from the reflected water. If you have that grass and the sky, then uh, you could add this to your sky too. So using either peach, or you could use all of them, peach, that really light orange, a kind of pink, <coughs> a darker pink. 
And this is sort of like um, an underside to the cloud. So I'm going to do this. Kind of a sc scribbly light pink. Say it one more time. Did you say dark pink or light pink? I'm using a light pink. I do have the dark here. I'm going to try it in another area. Yep. So let's try them out. Oops, got it in the blue. Get that blue out of there. All right. Sometimes your paper. Put, sometimes your paper. Say it one more time. Where do we put the um the light orange, the peach, dark pink, so, light pink? I'm doing clouds in the sky with them. At sunset, sometimes the clouds have a peach reflection on the bottoms of them. Like cotton candy clouds, you know? I'm going to add some of that dark pink in there. Man, if you love color, these pastels are your jam, right? I'll put a little hit of this uh, super light orange in there too. We do need some sort of a top to the cloud. I'm going to go back to my purple for the tops of the clouds. Hope you're all working with me on this. Sometimes you do that sunset and you're like, wait, I don't want to add the clouds. What if it ruins it? This is the chance you have to experiment, to try these things and see if you like it. I'm going to take a quick look and show you our very final step. So how are we doing? Awesome. Yes. Beautiful. Hold your picture up a little higher. Awesome. Yeah, I wanted to see your um, water reflected. Really nice. And make sure, though, um, when you blend that water, that it goes left to right, hmm? side to side, side to side, side to side. Oh, my goodness. Tiffany, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Yeah. Tiffany, in your water, the, um, the lines of the water, uh, of the colors, are really solid. If you could make them a little more jaggedy in the water for those colors, It'll make it look more like waves, like the water is moving, like uneven and jaggedy going side to side. Picture small waves going side to side. I see Yulia's. Oh my God, all this color is like color therapy for me. It's beautiful. Lillian's looking good. And is it, I forgot, Jacob? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Oh, and that's neat, but the sun off to the side, Jacob. Good. Evan's got his on the grass. He had some yellow and the lighter color grass in there too. Woohoo! So this next thing that I'm going to show, that's fantastic. Am I missing anybody else? Oh, there we go. Gino's doing okay. Edvika's doing okay. Jocelyn looks fantastic. Lots of yellow in there. Edvika's got a sun on the lower left. I see your clouds from here. Fantastic. Maddie's good. Ah, oh, so nice, so nice. All right. And Caden is good. Uh, I hope so. All right, here we go. Um, if you have grass in your picture, this will be a little different for you. So hold on, if you have grass and a ground in your picture, but if you have water in your picture, um, we're gonna get this going. Yeah, Miss Lindsay from Kickstart thinks everybody's is looking so good. Right, right, right. I'm gonna tip my camera down and I'm gonna go with black. We have to be so careful with black. So make sure all of your sky, all of your clouds, all of your water, is where you want it. Tiffany, that softened it up so nicely. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. So nice. All right. Um, you might want to take a minute. If there's any extra dust on your table, 
get that out. Use your tissue, clean it up. Do not dump it on your carpet and get your grown-ups mad at Miss Gail. Thank you so much. All right, now we go with black. Dun, dun, dun. I'm gonna snap my black too, and I'll show you where I'm going with this. Come with me to a tropical island. You ready to go, awesome? Yeah, let's go to a tropical island. Here it is. All right. On the bottom of my paper, and you're like, no, don't touch the water. It looks so good. Here it goes. I'm going to do the chalk is sideways. And add the island off to the side. I'll fill this in. Only in that island area. If you're not careful, this black will take over everything. And watch out for your hand. Don't put your hand in the pile of black chalk dust. I'm going to bring a tree up. I'm going to start with the base, kind of curve it in a little bit. And it's going to be a palm tree. So I start with the main branches of the palm tree from the top. I do like one, two, three, four, maybe five of these. And right now they're naked. So let's put those little fronds on there. I'm using the corner of my chalk and I'm going to pull these out from the center and then kind of lift lighter and um, do a finer line at the end. Oh, take me to this tropical island, right? Hey, what'd you do today? I went to a tropical island with Miss Gayo and Miss Lindsay. Love the sunset. Yeah, for sure. When you guys see beautiful sunsets this summer, take those pictures. You have a camera. I don't know. You have a phone? Maybe. Borrow mom and dad's phone. Mom, dad, this is a great sunset. Quick, take a picture. I'll draw it for you at home. They'll be like, what? Believe me, I could do it. Mine's looking like a hairy dog. Let me pull these together a little more. Make sure my tree is planted on the island. No light can be coming through from under the tree. I'm making it more solid. When I tip this to knock the dust off, I'm gonna be careful not to tip it upside down so that all the dust goes on my beautiful sunset. I'm gonna tip it downward so all the black dust comes down and away. This is the point where I lift my camera up and everybody tells me I have chalk on my face. What do you think? Do I have chalk on me? No, I will say Edvika has chalk on her face and I love it. Yeah, yeah, right out. That's what happens. Oh, awesome. It looks like Hawaii. Aloha. Someone's gonna love that. Hawaii. I yes, yes. Right. Oh my goodness. Lillian, so nice. Really, really beautiful. I mean, you can do all these variations on this. You could do like a tree that's um, not a palm tree and then with a branch coming out and put a, a girl sitting on a swing. You could do your horse running on an island or in the sunset in Michigan on grass. And so my friends who have grass, you can put a little horse or a person or a tree right up under that sun and you can make that black too. Oh, uh, there it is. Yeah, Evan did it. So he put, a, he put the silhouette in there and we make it black and that's called a silhouette. Maddie, how is yours? Let's see. Oh, uh, yeah, really peaceful. 
It's so soothing. Let's see, Joanna. I don't see any sunsets over There's no sunsets where you live? What did you say? No, there are sunsets, but we can't see them. Oh. Joanna, so nice. Bring it closer to the camera. Let me see, a little bit closer to the camera. Wow. Would you all hold them up so I could get a picture of everyone all together? That would be awesome. Beautiful. I feel like I'm in an art gallery right now. Oh man, guys, round of applause for all of you. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. So you do have more paper. You have those chalk pastels. Now you know how to use them. If you ever want to use black in a really colorful picture, remember, save that for the very last. There's no getting rid of the black once you put that on your picture. Keep your chalks all in color order. Put them right back in rainbow order on your in your box. Keep yourself organized. Keep these clean. As you work with them, the edges get dirty because your fingers get dirty and the dust gets on them. If you go to use them again and they're dusty, you, um, you lay out a piece of tissue and you kind of clean the chalk up on the tissue and get back down to the pure color again. And that works really nicely. And if they break, that's actually a good thing. What do you think of that? Say it again. Oh my gosh, look at your palm trees. Excuse me. Is good? I can barely hear. I don't know why it's a little bit spotty. I can barely hear. Is this good? Oh, is it good? Yeah, for sure. Yulia, look at that. Go show it to your grown-ups. You're going to make them cry. Tears of happiness. 100% honest. Watch and see. Give, it, give them a tissue. Say, here's a tissue. You're going to need this. You're going to cry tears of joy because it's so beautiful. But here's the thing, though, with these kinds of pictures, you cannot just like um, mm -hmm. tape it to the wall, right? Because it's so messy. The drawback is you have to get them in a frame. Some people like to spray them. Some people um, say, well, I'm not going to buy anything. You could spray it with hairspray. Hairspray actually seals this down pretty good. Some people use like a spray Mod Podge. You know what Mod Podge is? All right, so it comes in a spray can, too and you can spray that on, that seals it all in, your best bet is to put it in a frame. So get those Michaels coupons. Mama, you yeah. use the art spray, the one that sets things so that they don't mix, mix up when you touch them. Okay. 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 Yeah. Awesome. I you another one of my paintings I have done. Joanna, do you have a question? Um, I just wanted to say, I just wanted to say to our teacher that, um, about a cartoon, like, I think my brother and little sister are watching the Pilgrim's Progress is a really good movie because I'm a Christian. Thank you so much to everyone for spending the afternoon with us today. And thank you to Ms. Gale for this awesome class. I can't wait to see all the things that you continue to make. And I hope you bring them down to the gallery or at least send me a picture of them because they're amazing. So thanks, everybody. Enjoy your sunshiny afternoon. Bye, Bye. guys. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.